What's My Line? Brought to you by Geritol, the high-potency vitamin iron-rich tonic in liquid or tablets to help you feel stronger. And now, let's all play What's My Line? And now, live from New York, let's meet our What's My Line panel. First, the popular columnist whose voice of Broadway appears in papers from coast to coast, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. And now, a visitor from To Tell the Truth, the wonderful Tom Poston. Thank you. Not only am I very fortunate to have an introduction by the beautiful Miss Kilgallen, but to show you that I really am a thorn between two roses, let me introduce my companion on this side, the beautiful, charming, lovely Miss Arlene Francis. And now a man that knows books are better than ever because they're having such a tremendous year at Random House, Mr. Bennett Sir. I dare say that What's My Line is the only panel show on television that has a secret ingredient. And here it is, John Charles Daly. <laughs> Well, good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to What's My Line. Tom Poston, it's nice to see you sitting on the panel. Bennett, it's strange to hear you saying nice things about me, but it's a delightful experience. <laughs> and uh, it will affect the next 30 minutes, not at all. We've got some very interesting occupations. I'm sure they're going to give you some trouble. And we will also have a famous mystery guest before my friends on the panel a little bit later in the program. We'll meet our first challenger after this. And now to meet our first contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> Marilyn. Marilyn Patch, is that right? Time. I would normally say, is it Miss or Mrs., but I think we will just agree that it's Miss Marilyn Patch. You're right. right. Fine. I think it's fair if we tell the panel, if you don't mind, uh, that we're talking about gainful employment, which you uh, indulge yourself in with regularity and during the whole year, but it's in addition to your schoolwork. Is that all right with yes, you? Yes, it is. Fine. Where are you from? I'm from Natick, Massachusetts. Natick, Massachusetts. That's between Wellesley and Framingham. That's right. All right. You see, I went to school myself. <laughs> I'm telling you what. Marilyn, may I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score, Marilyn? Yes, I do. All right, in that event, we will let the folks at home and the folks in the theater know exactly what your line is. Oh. All right. Panel, we will tell you that Miss Patch is salaried and deals in a service, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Dorothy Kilgallen. Uh, Miss Patch, do people watch you when you do what you do? Yes, they do. Uh, do you do it indoors? Yes, I do. Would the people be considered any type of audience? Yes. Uh, are they an unseen rather than a seen audience? Yes. Uh, do you do what you do in a medium of communications? Yes. Is it television? Yes, it is. Do you have a television program? Yes, I do. Now, do I have to find out what kind? Yeah, that's very good, Dorothy. Actually, you have. You've exposed all, really. Marilyn has a, a television program that everybody in Boston knows about, but you uh, see if you can tell us what she does. Well, are you the uh, sort of mistress of ceremonies and the main person on it? Yes, I am. Do you ever have puppets? Yes. 
Do you have a children's program? Yes, I do. And you talk to the children and tell them stories? Mm -hmm. I think we have to, and is a ventriloquist and, and oh. uh, handles her own oh. puppets and everything goes over. <laughs> Yes. Oh, you were wonderful. Actually, no, I think probably one of our problems was that really you have so much presence that it was suggested almost immediately that you, you might have a lot of experience talking to audiences. But Marilyn is on WHDH in Boston. In Boston, in that's Boston. right. It's the CBS station up there. Right? <laughs> on Saturday morning. Every Saturday morning from 7 to 8. From 7 to 8. And she has a, a it's called Marilyn and Calico. Calico is a donkey and Bennett's going up and be the, I'm too much. <laughs> No, but uh, uh, you, you handle the puppets and throw your voice, and your yes. mother and dad help you prepare the program? Yes, um, they're songwriters, and they write some of the songs that I sing on my program, and they also write my program. I'd like mm. to hear one of the songs. <laughs> one of the songs? No. Now, let me see. They wrote so many, I mean, they wrote one called, that's been published called, We Wish We Had It, But We Ain't. <laughs> we Wish We Had It, But We Ain't? Yes, it, it could be a very common thing, I think it is. Yes, it is, but what are you going to do about your English, Mark, when you get back to school in a couple of weeks? <laughs> no, I'm just teasing you, Mary. Uh, Can you sing a little bit of that? Just a million piece. soaked away, and only time for play. We wish we had it, but we ain't. Oh, we wish we had it, but we ain't. <laughs> <laughs> Thank you very much for doing our best on our time. Thank you very much Boston is lucky to have her. Now let's see what you can do. <laughs> now let's see what you can do with another challenger. Will you enter and sign in, please? <laughs> George Jackson, is that right, sir? Jackson, where are you from? I'm from Auckland, New Zealand, but uh, now residing in Williamsport, Pennsylvania. You now live in Williamsport, but you were from Auckland yes. originally, in New Zealand. Well, That's it's right. nice to have you with us, sir. May I present the panel, Mr. Jackson? Uh, yeah. Can you join me over here? Do you uh, know how we keep score? Uh, yes. All right. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. You're not going to tell us. No, Tom, I'm not going to tell you that. I will tell you that uh, Mr. Jackson is salaried, that he deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with um, Arlene Francis. Mr. Jackson, is it a product that I might use? Yes. Is it a product that is used by both men and women? Yes. Is it found in the home? Yes. Is it consumable? Yes. Is it uh, therefore eaten or put into the mouth? Yes. Uh, would it be a product that one might have at mealtime? Yes. Uh, is it or has it ever been alive? No. No, not in our terms of reference. One down and nine to go, Mr. Sir. Uh, Mr. Jackson, has this product ever grown in the ground? Yes. Uh, might it be either in the fruit or vegetable family? Yes. Yes. Now, vegetable. you're using this in, in the broadest terms or the narrowest terms, Ben? When you say fruit or vegetable, are you which asking will, if it's vegetable get me matter? Which yes, broad or narrow? Beg pardon? Which will get me a yes, broad or narrow? <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Well, there you are. <laughs> broad. <laughs> Might I say it's a sort of a vegetable? Uh, mm -hmm. Or has been at one time? Well, I, I would say here that we've done all we can for you in this area, Bennett. It's in the vegetable, in the broad spectrum of those things which grow, it is in the vegetable area. But, uh, Does it grow when it matures rather underneath the surface of the ground rather than over it? 
No. That's two down and eight to go, and thank you very much, Ben. Yes, Miss Kilgallen. Mr. Jackson, is most of this food solid rather than liquid? Or this whatever it is you eat? Uh, is it more solid than liquid? Yes. Do you swallow it? Uh, now we are really having trouble, and I wish I was... <laughs> the, uh, the basic... <laughs> the specific product which we are discussing is solid. Your question is, is it swallowed? No. That's three down and seven to go, Mr. Poston. Would I be correct in assuming that the fact you come from, from Auckland, New Zealand, has nothing to do with your job or what you do? Uh, no. Thank you. This makes it four out of six to go, Miss Francis. Well, this is something you put in your mouth, you chew on it a bit, and then you give it all up. No, that is not. I will before. <laughs> <laughs> no, before you, uh, uh, Mr. Jackson tries to answer the question. We have told you that the product, uh, in its general sense, is put in the mouth. Uh, uh, as I have told you, it is a solid, the right. product itself. Uh, but it is not. Uh, is it a product? that one can buy in a store? Yes. Would one buy it at a, uh, a tobacconist? No. That's five down and five to go, Mr. Sir. It just floored me. Is this product uh, available more often in New Zealand than possibly anywhere else? No. no. Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. John, could you clarify for me a little bit? Uh, have we established that this is a food or that it is not a food? We have established that it is a consumable product which is put into the mouth. And I explained this is in its general identification. However, specifically, is it a solid? Yes. Specifically as a product, is it swallowed? No. Now, does that help? I have a feeling we should be unspecific about this. Yeah. <laughs> uh, well, does this suggest, John, and this isn't a question, this is just a discussion, uh, does, this, oh. does this suggest that we should go back to what the original product is rather than the end product, which is made from it and put in yeah, the mouth? Yeah, that, that would help. Mm -hmm. I mean, he has something to do with it before you put it in your mouth. Is that it? Mm-hmm. Golly. Um, would you imagine that I had ever seen this thing? Mm-hmm. Oh, yes. You think we all have? Mm -hmm. Is this yes. something likely to be found in any American home? Yes. Yeah. Could I hold it in my hand? Yes. Uh, could it be folded? No. No. Seven down and three to go. I'm going to be in trouble on this, I think. Mr. Poston. Is, <laughs> there, uh, is, is, <clears throat> is there a curing process involved in, in, uh, in the preparation of your product for uh, use? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. There is a process, curing process, involved along the line. Yes. Yeah. Well, I'm speaking of, yes, yeah. thank you. Tell me, is the reason that you don't put it in, you don't swallow it in its solid form because it is made into another form? That is correct. Could it be that you are concerned with tea? Yes. yes. Very good, sir. Specifically, specifically, what is Mr. Jackson's relationship to tea? Taster. Well, I would presume that. I said. What did you say, Benny? It's wrong. I said he was a taster, and you're going to tell me I'm wrong. No, you're right. <laughs> you're Now, I'll be, I'll be quite, do you feel that I misled you in the answers that I gave you? I was concerned about it, but I didn't see that I could do otherwise. Because you don't swallow the tea leaves, you swallow the fluid from which... You sometimes yes, swallow them inadvertently, John. <laughs> well, I've never been inadvertently, you see, and I... No, I know. Man, I've heard some people smoke that stuff, but I yeah. don't see how they can do that. <laughs> you buy it as a tobacconist. Now, I missed it because the thing that tickles me is I've been sitting here knowing what Mr. Jackson did, and he works, he's with the Tetley Tea Company, and, you know, we all remember the Tetley Tea Taster. So here is the Tetley Tea Taster for you. Is he Mr. Dine? Uh, no, that is my boss. That's what? My boss. Your boss. Oh. Well, compliment of me as a terribly good bag. <laughs>
We'll meet tonight's mystery guest in just a moment, but first, here is a word from our sponsor. Now the special feature of our program, the appearance of our mystery challenger, for which, as you all know, the panel is always blindfolded. Are those blindfolds all in place, panel? Yes, sir. Yes, sir. Good. Will you enter mystery challenger and sign in, please? case a different form of questioning one question at a time in turn moving clockwise and we'll begin with uh, Bennett sir well, just to get a lingering suspicion out of my mind are you by any chance a very beautiful young lady no nope. one down and nine to go Miss Gilgallop I didn't hear the answer the answer was no nope. <laughs> are you in show business yep posted uh, do you have a dimple anywhere what that I mean uh, that, 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 that we could see if you, if we didn't have these uh, blindfolds. You no. have a no? no. Two down and eight to go, Miss Francis. Are you I want to state man? here that I'm not qualified to uh, modify that last answer in any way. Miss Francis. I don't know what dimples you have in mind, uh, Tom, but are you a leading man? <laughs> no. Three down and seven to go, Mr. Surf. But are you of the masculine persuasion? <laughs> no. Four down and six to go, Miss Kilgallen. Was that a no again? That was a no. Uh, are you a singer? No. Five down and five to go, Mr. Poston. Uh, are you best known for your work in motion pictures? Still no? I don't know whether there's... No, I will say of... here, with our guest's permission, I won't... I'll give you a qualified no. Our guest is extremely well known for work in motion pictures, and I think you would have to be... Uh, it would depend on your basic area of interest as to whether you ascribed her, her fame to one element more than another. So well, we'll like give you a qualified yes, right. Miss Francis. <laughs> well, are you uh, best known for your work in the theater, then? Yep. Mr. Sir? Yes, I, 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 I yep. Yes. Are you also... Ah! <laughs> Are you also well known for more or less regular work in television? When you say more or less regular, you speak now of a regular weekly schedule, Bennett, or a... Yes. Ah, thanks. No! Six down and four to go, Miss Kilgallen. Have you ever been a member of the Actors Studio? Nope. Seven down and three to go, Mr. Poston. Are you performing on Broadway at this time? Yep. Miss Francis. Is that a yes? Yes. Mm -hmm. At this time. Are you appearing in a comedy? Oh, don't look at me. <laughs> <laughs> it's a dubious comedy. Yeah. Yep. What? Is the, yep. is, is the play you're performing in uh, Poor Dad, Oh Dad? <laughs> Hermione uh, Gaynor. Hermione? Yeah. Yeah. Hermione, you're going to have to do it. The name of the play is Old oh Dad. Oh, Dad, Dad, poor Dad. Mama's hung you in the closet. And I'm and so... And I am feeling so sad. <laughs> and I really don't know whether to call it a comedy or not, because... It's half and half. But it's mostly it's hilarious. It's a comedy. It's mostly it's hilarious, but it has a, a lot of underlying philosophy. I think <laughs> you bring... <laughs> <laughs> Miss Gingold, I think you bring out the comedy rather than the uh, tragedy of the play. Uh, yes, I, I think so too. If I would not like to see the day when it was considered basically funny that my wife should hang me in a closet and just... <laughs> I was rather wondering about, you know. Well, well, because I do come in with a coffin, and <laughs> <laughs> I wondered if that was really a laugh. <laughs> I think it must be, though, because yes, we, there it's are all experts in jolly, jolly jolly good fun. That's right. <laughs> and it's unique show. because it came from off Broadway to Broadway. It had an extraordinary career off Broadway, coast to coast tour, and back. To Broadway. Oh, that's wonderful. Congratulations. And then I hope later on to London. I hope so too. And thank you for coming you. to us on Sunday night in New York.
Well, panel, I think we have to agree that you have done rather well so far this evening, and I will congratulate you. We'll have another contestant after this word from our alternate sponsor. And now for a final contestant. Will you enter and sign in, please? Mary? Mary Johnson, right? Miss Johnson, where are you from? Elmwood Park, Illinois. Elmwood Park, Illinois. <laughs> Miss Johnson, may I present the panel? Now, would you join me over here, please? Do you know how we keep score? Yes, I do. In that event, we'll let the audience in the theater and the audience at home know exactly what your line is. We can tell you that Miss Johnson is salaried and deals in a product, and we'll begin the general questioning with uh, Tom Post. Um, Miss Johnson, may I call you Mary? Yes, please. Oh, sweet, you look like a nice kid. What do you do, honey, for a living? <laughs> <laughs> Does your work involve uh, performing a service for people? Oh, this it's deals a in a product. product. Tom. A product. Is mm. your product used by uh, both men and women? No. One down and nine to go, Miss Francis. It's used more by one sex than another, then? Yes. Is it used... But the audience laughed when they found out what you did. Is there anything entertaining about your product? No. Two down and eight to go, Mr. Sir. Well, I'll ask you, is the product used by women rather than men? No. Three down and seven to go, Miss Kilgallen. Is it used by men rather than women? Yes. Uh, Gosh, right, that right. girl gets smarter all the time. Why are you in here, Dorothy? That's the only sex we have Just... left. <laughs> <laughs> what answer did I get? Now they've got me all you get, Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Used more by men than women. Used more by men than women. Yeah. All right. Can they hold it in their hand? Yes. Uh, is it solid rather than liquid? Yes. Uh, would you say that this would be found in most homes? Yes. It's possible, certainly, that you might find it in most homes. Is it used indoors? No. no. Four down and six to go, Mr. Poston. When you say men, does that mean that it would be used more by men than, say, boys? Probably. Probably. Is it something that's worn? Yes. Is it worn uh, more above the waist than below? Yes. Is it worn below the face? No. no. Five down and five to go, Miss Francis. It therefore is worn in the area of the head. I think that's uh, yes. That's right. very good. Yes. Yeah. Is it worn? Is it worn uh, instead of in the area of the face, more on the top of the head? Yes. Is it other than a toupee? Mm. Yes. <laughs> I'm afraid we're running out of time, and I have to throw all the cards over. It is other than a toupee. It's a football helmet. Helmet. Yeah. helmet. Mary, is, uh, Mary is with the Wilson Sporting Goods Company. Is that right? Yes, in Chicago, sir. and she puts the, uh, the uh, what do they call it? Foam rubber. Wraps. Mm -hmm. Foam rubber in the, in, the, in, the, in the helmet. Thank you very much, Mary. Nice Thank to you. have you with us on What's My Life. Well, we ran out of time, so we tripped you up on that one, but it's been a pleasant half hour. Nice to see you again, Tom Poston, and good night, Miss Dorothy Kilgallen. Good night, John. Good night, Tom. Good night, Dorothy. Good night, darling. Arlene. Good night, my dear. Good night, Bennett. John, I think little Marilyn Patch is too young even for you. Good night. <laughs> That's the nicest thing he said about me, too, that old goat, for a long time. And thank you, ladies and gentlemen, for being with me on What's My Life. What's My Line is a CBS Television Network production in association with Mark Goodson and Bill Thompson. Johnny Olsen speaking.